Ladies and gentlemen, this is Pastor Sean, and I hope you're doing well out there today. And I'm going to be getting into the Word of God today, and I want to talk about how we can overcome every single dart that the enemy throws against us. You know, the devil is, he's at us every day. The Bible says that he walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So, you know, the devil is trying to trip you up. He wants to stop you. He wants to bring these different attacks, different, you know, approaches to you to try to harm you. He wants to harm you through temptation. He wants to harm you through uh, trial and tribulation. He wants to harm you through others. He wants to try to, to cause you to give up on the Lord. He's doing all these things. But here's the good news. God says that if you stay with him, he's going to help you to tread on the enemy, and you can get victory every time. So without further ado, I want to jump into the book of Isaiah, and I'm going to be talking a little bit more about how we can conquer these battles that the enemy sends to us. So without further ado, Isaiah chapter 54 is where I'm going to go. And I believe that God has a word for you today. So Isaiah chapter 54, and I am going to read verse 17. But before I get into the word of God and read this verse, if you have not subscribed to this channel and you are new and you are thinking about hitting that button, I encourage you to smash that subscribe button right now. And I would be blessed if you did. And if you could also like, like this video as well, it would really bring more traffic to the channel and it would be a blessing to me as well. So Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, what does it say? No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So, very powerful passage of scripture. We've heard this quoted often. It's something that we really get encouraged when we hear that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. So I want to get into what God is trying to say. Not only was he saying this for the nation of Israel, and he was going to restore Israel, and he was going to bless them, but you know what? God wants to restore you too. You say, you know what? I've been going through so many things, so much injustice, so many attacks, you know, sicknesses, diseases, financial problems, uh, persecution, I feel like the weapons are prospering. I feel like the enemy's getting in. He's getting me. I, I, I don't know, Lord, what is going on? I thought you said no weapon that's formed against me is going to prosper. What is going on? Well, I want to explain this to you right now. What does it say? Hey, Isaiah 54, verse 17, it says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. First thing we got to look at is no weapon that is formed against you. You know, he's forming these weapons. He's forming this attack. He's bringing adversity. God's allowing it because he's removing the hedge to test you, to see how you will react to this. How strong will you get? You know, tough times don't laugh, last, but tough people do. So what are you going to do about it? That's the whole question here in this devotion. God's saying this, hey, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. So the weapon is formed. He's going to hit your finances to see how you respond. He's going to hit you physically. He's going to allow the enemy to do it. God doesn't do it, but the enemy, he allows the enemy to come in. God doesn't put sickness and disease on anybody. God doesn't do evil. God is perfect. He's holy. He's righteous. But he allows these things to happen. What do you do? How do you respond? And uh, the weapons are formed. He's bringing people into your lives. He's allowing people to come into your lives that you are wondering, why are they in my life, Lord? And you know what? I've noticed when you run away from one annoying person, God will allow two more annoying people on the other side. So it's best to just say, Lord, this person's here. What are you trying to teach me? What are you trying to say to me? How do I respond to them? Do I avoid them? Do I pray for them? Do I try to win them over? What do I do? There's so much you have to, to figure out when you're in a valley, when you're in a trial. You know, trials aren't fun. They're hard. When the weapons are coming, the enemy is throwing fiery darts at us. But the first thing it says, and I love it when we put on the armor of God. It's important to put on the armor of God. But it says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Out of all the armors, whether it's the belt of truth or if it's the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, 
whether it's the helmet of salvation, where, whether it's the, the shoes or the boots of peace, out of all of them, it says, above all, these armors put on. It says, that, it says above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You know, you put that shield of faith up, you take that, he's going to put an attack on you, but you've got to believe that this weapon that's coming against you will not prosper, that you can deflect these weapons, you can deflect these attacks. When he hits your finances, you just need to pray and say, Lord, thank you, Lord. Even though this is going on right now, I got this unexpected bill, or my rent's going up, I got all this um, grocery bills, I can't afford these things. What's going on? God says, I'll supply all your needs. Trust me. God will allow these tests and trials to come to see what you will do. Realize that it's not going to prosper. Realize it's only temporary. Realize that no weapon formed against you will prosper because it won't because God has got you covered. He's got you back. He loves you. Loves you unconditionally. So, it says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. So people are going to rise up to you in judgment. They're going to try to judge you. They're going to try to attack you. They're going to try to say all kinds of evil, ill will. They're going to spew out vitriol. They're going to smear, slander, besmirch, say all kinds of things about you, try to character assassinate you. What are you going to do? How are you going to respond? You're going to get apoplectic, you're going to get frustrated. Or are you going to say, hey, you know what? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And when they rise up in judgment with their tongue, you know what? I'm going to condemn it. You know what? It says the tongue, he overthroweth the words of the transgressor. That's what the scripture says in Proverbs. He overthrows the word of the transgressor. You know what that means? They can lie. They can smear. They can say all kinds of things against you, but it'll be overthrown. <laughs> God will just totally overthrow what they say, and he will give you victory. When the enemy is bringing these swords at you, darts coming against you, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Here's the good news. The weapons that Satan sends, he may hurt, it may attack, it may feel scary, it may bring trepidation in your life, but here's the good news. It will not prosper. It's only going to help you prosper. The weapon that he sends, he's being duped, the devil, because you know why? When you win the battle, you're only getting stronger. When you win the battle, you get a testimony. When you win the battle, you are going to praise the Lord, and the enemy is going to weep. When you reap, you're going to get the victory. That's how it is. So no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. <laughs> so when they rise up in judgment against you, you can condemn it. You can speak against it. You can say, no, I am not receiving this. I am declaring the victory. You need to speak it out. Whatever weapon's coming against you, whether it's a person, whether it's a trial, whatever it is, you know what it is, beloved. All of you have different trials out here watching today. You know what your situation is. You know what you need to do? You need to speak it out. You need to condemn. You need to take authority over it and say, no, it ain't happening. No weapon formed against me is prospering. I have the victory in Jesus. It says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. You know that's your inheritance? This is who you are. You are a child of God. You're the sons and daughters of God. Everyone watching, you're believers you have Jesus in your heart, you're a child of God. You know what? You can condemn these things. You can speak life, death and life from the power of the tongue. We need to know it's only for a season and we can speak and turn these things around. That's our heritage. That's our inheritance as believers of children of God. It says that, you know, we shall tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, Luke 10, 19, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You can tread. I have given you power, Jesus says, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. And on top of it, he says, you know what? This ain't going to prosper. The only thing it's going to do is make you stronger. The only thing it's going to do is make you more humble. The only thing it's going to do is bring you to a new level spiritually. The only thing it's going to do is show God's faithfulness to you. He is amazing. So it says that's the heritage of the Lord, that you can step up and rise up and use God's word to get the victory every time. Claim his word, speak his promises, and don't give up. And it says this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. That's your inheritance. And the righteousness is of me. Their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. You know what? The righteousness in you is of him. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. You are righteous because of him. You say, well, I'm a sinner. I make mistakes. <laughs> you, know, you know, maybe I'm getting what I deserve by these weapons that are hitting me. You know what? You're the righteousness of God and you are not. 
God forgives you. He loves you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are righteous because of him. The Bible says you're the righteousness of God in Christ. You're kings and priests. When you're saved, he doesn't look at your sin. He doesn't see you as a sinful person anymore. He sees the blood covering you that makes you righteous. It says that you've been justified. You've got the ministry of reconciliation and you have been justified. Justification, that means that you have been made righteous by the blood. Even though we make mistakes, he has made you righteous. No weapon formed against you will ever prosper. Trust that. Hang on to that. Cling on to his promises. Realize you have the victory. This trial is going to end, and God's going to give you something much greater than you can ever imagine. Get excited, beloved. He has a wonderful plan for you. If this devotion encouraged you, again, I encourage you to... Uh, you know, put a comment below, and if you could put a like on this video, I would appreciate it. God bless you.